think they're sending Happy New Year calls right here in Central Park. It's not the Jewish New Year, but it is a secular New Year. And the ducks are celebrating the geese, actually. Okay, I am Baruch Halevsky here, Chabad Family Programs of the West Side, here with a New Year's resolution for you, and for myself, and for our children. So, this Parsha Vayigash talks about the dramatic meeting between Yosef and his brothers, where his brothers were horrified. They were very concerned about what he would do, being that they had sold him into slavery and they were not very, seemingly not very kind to him in their youth. Wow, they really like the Dvar Torah, these guys. They're singing along. There's something, some kind of party happening. A Canadian geese party. I think they're Canadian geese. <laughs> anyway, so in this dramatic moment, instead of Yosef saying, okay, you guys are all toast, um, Yosef says something very interesting, exactly the opposite. He says, you guys, don't worry about it. It wasn't even you who sent me here. It was God. And God sent me here to Egypt. He sent me to provide life. Lemichia, from the word chai, chaya. He sent me. He sent me to provide sustenance because there was seven years of famine in Egypt and in the rest of the world, and Yosef was able to arrange for the storage and the food and of the food and the. Henceforth, the sustenance of all the countries. Just say hello to our friends over here. Yeah, so Yosef said to them, it wasn't you who sent me, it was God who sent me, and he sent me here for a reason. He sent me ahead. So the Rebbe says, God obviously knew that there was going to be a famine in Egypt many years later, so he sent a Jew, the child of Yaakov, to Egypt to prepare for that disaster and to plan ahead and to take care of it before it happened. The Rebbe, in the talk to children in 1985, he said, you know, everything in the Torah is a lesson for us. And one simple but powerful lesson for us from this story is that you, child, you Jewish boy or girl, young, and you're wondering what kind of positive influence and effect can I have on my surroundings if I'm in Gullus, if I'm in exile. I'm, and not only that, the Rebbe actually said something different. He said, the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, tries to convince you, tries to dampen your joy in serving God and in working in the Jewish realm. Because we're in exile and we're in Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is Egypt, and Egypt in Hebrew, Mitzrayim, actually means a narrow place. So every exile is called Egypt in the Jewish tradition because we're in a narrow place. We're not where we're meant to be. And we're under the authority, the influence of Pharaoh. Now, not the same Pharaoh, but the concept of Pharaoh, which is the secular world. And we're not in Israel, where we're meant to be with, the, with Mashiach and the Beis HaMikdash and serving God in peace. So we're still in exile. Says the Rebbe, let's learn from Yosef's response to his brothers. It wasn't you who sent me here. It was God who sent me here with a plan. The Rebbe says, way back in the beginning, God knew 
that somebody in your town, your town, in your area, in your street, on your block, will be hungry. Like there was a famine in Egypt. It says somebody will be hungry, but not just for food or water, physical, but for spiritual food and water, for the Torah, the study of the Torah and the observance of mitzvahs. And God placed you, said the Rebbe to the children in 1985, and by extension to us here right now, wherever you are in the world, God placed you in this specific time and space and with the capabilities that you have to satisfy the hunger, the spiritual hunger of the person next to you. The Rebbe was talking to children and he said it in an interesting way, very empowering to young children. He said, when you will influence your friend to study Torah and to observe the mitzvot. Your friend has friends and family in other places and they'll illuminate their influence them wherever they are. And the children all over the world will influence their parents and thus the world over will be illuminated with the light of the Torah and the mitzvahs, starting with the children. So, off, off the record here, sometimes we think that our kids really are just little kids and we try to shelter them and not uh, give them opportunities to really change the world, but this is in 1985 before the internet started and the Rebbe was talking to children, telling them, you can change the world, one of you. Each one of you can change the whole world. And that was the message that the Rebbe said then to children in 85 and that now this message is so much more relevant in our times where we have instant access to the whole world and uh, children and adults alike are able to affect, reach and affect the whole world instantly, literally. Shalom. Um, yeah, so that's the story I wanted to share with you that, and that's why I, I do this running commentary here, because I know that somewhere a little bit of the light of Hasidus can spread instantly throughout the world, and you can use every medium you have to do the same, whether it's technology, music, writing, or any other service that you provide to the community. Bring the light. And just to mention also tonight is Hey Teves. It's a very, uh, it's a new Hasidic holiday in which I'm not going to go into the, all the details, but I'm just going to mention it, which many years ago, I think in 87 it was, the, there was a major spiritual decree that manifests itself in a physical world in a court case against the library of the Rebbe's books. And it was won in the Supreme Court and uh, on, in, the, in the favor of the Hasidim, which represented for us a new light and uh, an idea that God is on our side again and wants us to take the books from the library and the messages in those books, spread them to the world and illuminate the whole world. That's my story for today. You can see more on Chabad.org. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day and wonderful new year. Take care.